two of you guys have decided that uh, you want to become a helicopter pilot. If you walk up to a hundred helicopter pilots and you ask them what was the most difficult thing about becoming a helicopter pilot, the universal answer is going to be paying for your training, right? And unfortunately, helicopter training is very expensive, even more so than airplane training or, and certainly more expensive than gyroplane training, right? If you want to be a helicopter pilot, if you're of at least average intelligence, you should be fine. I think you'll be able to understand all the concepts that you need to understand to be a helicopter pilot. If you've got at least average or somewhat better motor skills, you should be able to accomplish your goal of becoming a heli helicopter pilot. That should not be a limitation for you at all. So that brings us to the hard part, three, paying for this thing. And again, it's very expensive to get a helicopter rating. Right? So. <clears throat> there are ways that I can show you that you can shave a significant uh, portion of the cost off. And this is not a small amount of money. We're not talking about saving three or four hundred dollars or two or three hundred here or there. I'm talking about saving tens of thousands of dollars, literally tens of thousands of dollars. This is how I got my rating and uh, I'd like to share uh, with you the, uh, the method for doing that. Okay, so let me just sort of quickly sum up how this works. If you were to get uh, your gyroplane ratings, let's say you go to, you get your private and your commercial and your CFI gyroplane, and you go to add on helicopter ratings. Well, when you have the, the gyroplane ratings, the gyroplane is category rotorcraft class gyroplane. And you're gonna be adding on a class addition to that existing uh, category. So helicopter is category rotorcraft class helicopter right so <clears throat> the requirements for this fall under 61.63 uh, FAR 61.63 and the name of that section is additional aircraft ratings uh, other than ratings at the ATP pilot certificate level and if you go to if you look up under the uh, again we're going to be doing a class addition we're going to be adding helicopter class helicopter to an existing uh, rotorcraft uh, gyroplane class gyroplane certificate both at the private the commercial and uh, the CFI in fact you don't even have to get a private helicopter rating you can skip private helicopter rating and go straight to commercial helicopter rating from a commercial gyroplane rating so let's look at 6163 additional class rating these are the four requirements for uh, adding an additional class rating to your pilot certificate Number one is you must have a logbook or training record endorsement from an authorized instructor attesting that the person was found competent in the appropriate aeronautical knowledge areas and proficient in the uh, appropriate areas of operation. That means your instructor has to, you have to convince your instructor that you're ready for your check ride and they endorse you when you are prepared. You've got the knowledge base and the skills to pass the check ride. Number two, must pass the practical test. That's the check ride. You gotta pass the check ride. Number three is need not, repeat, not meet the specified training time requirements prescribed by this part that apply to the pilot certificate for the aircraft class rating sought. All right. Number four, need not, again, not take an additional knowledge test provided that the applicant holds an airplane, rotorcraft, powered lift, uh, or airship rating at that pilot certificate level. So, let me sum it up, four requirements. You don't have to take an, another knowledge test. There are no hour requirements, okay? Now, nobody's gonna learn to fly a helicopter in a half hour, but there are no requirements as far as the number of hours that you have to obtain in the helicopter. Number two, you gotta pass the check ride. And number four, well, I guess that's number four, you have to convince your, you know, you're not going to get endorsed for your check ride until you're ready, both with the knowledge base and the skills necessary to pass the check ride. Okay, so now let me just, for all, everybody that's going, oh, but what about part 61 dot blah, blah, blah? It doesn't apply, okay? I've had this argument with I don't know how many people, and everybody thinks they're an expert in this case. It does not apply. So they want to spout out 61 dot whatever, whatever. Oh, how about 61 blah, blah, blah? None of that, none of that <clears throat> applies. It's only 6163, and that's it. So what's the advantage of this? Getting your training in the gyro plane is much cheaper, a whole heck of a lot cheaper. And so if you obtain your ratings in the gyro plane and then add on helicopter ratings, um, 
you can save a uh, huge amount of money. The other advantage is, since we're not having all these required cross countries and night flight and all of that sort of thing, because you've already done it in category, all right, when you were working on your gyroplane ratings, you did all of your required cross countries, all your required night flight, your night solo, and uh, all of that, and got it done within category, you were within category rotorcraft, then when you uh, add on to the helicopter, you don't have to do a bunch of required uh, cross-country flight. You don't have to do a bunch of night flight. You can do as much as you want, but you're not required to do any of that. What's nice about that, it allows me to concentrate on training you how to fly the helicopter, right? I've often said if I only got 10 hours to teach somebody how to fly a helicopter, and it's going to take you more than 10, but if I only was given 10 hours and that's it, we'd probably never get more than three feet off the ground. And most of your training would be on the ramp, picking the aircraft up, setting the aircraft down, during uh, pedal turns left and right, backwards flight, sideways flight, pirouettes. And we can really concentrate on that, and you can become very proficient at doing that and also doing all the PTS maneuvers, shooting confined areas, shooting pinnacle approaches, during auto rotations. We're able to concentrate on all of that and not do a lot of uh, things that you've already done within category like long uh, distance cross countries that you, you learn nearly nothing about once you learn how to navigate. There's, you don't learn a whole lot sitting at, in, a, in an aircraft on a 200 mile cross country or something. So it provides a lot of advantages. And uh, the, uh, what I see was the guys that go from a gyroplane to a helicopter is a very easy transition as well. So. And don't think that the time that you're spending in the gyro plane is somehow wasted time. Let me give you a couple examples. Uh, one of the students that I taught how to fly got his ratings with me, went to work for an EMS company, and here in Missouri you have to have 1,800 hours helicopter time to fly EMS in the state of Missouri. So he had the 1,800 hours in the state of, uh, in helicopters. In the state of Illinois you have to have 2,000 hours rotor craft time be able to fly EMS in the state of Illinois. So this particular individual was able to use 1,800 hours of helicopter time and he had more than 200 hours of uh, gyroplane plane time to bring his rotorcraft total up to 2,000 and hence he was then employable as a EMS helicopter pilot in Illinois. Right. And another guy that flies EMS that got his ratings with me and after he got his ratings, he went and flew mostly tours which was during the day. I uh, got a lot of turbine time flying tours in Alaska. It was all pretty much during the day. So when he came back to get a uh, job flying EMS, uh, to fly EMS, um, a helicopter pilot flying EMS, you have to have 100 hours of unaided night flight. And that means flying at night with no night vision goggles on, you have to have 100 hours of it. It doesn't have to be in a helicopter. It could be in an airplane, gyroplane, whatever. And in this particular case, um, this guy had about 35 or 40 hours of helicopter night flight time, uh, but he didn't meet the 100 hour requirement. So he ended up flying a uh, gyroplane and burned up about 50 or 60 hours of night flight in the gyroplane to meet the 100 hours of night flight requirement. So again, don't think that all the time that you're spending in the gyroplane is somehow wasted flight experience. It's not, it's very good flight experience. You're learning how to fly a rotor and a stick, and uh, you can get uh, a lot of good night and cross-country experience in the gyroplane while you're uh, burning up the hours towards your ratings. Right. So again, don't think that this is uh, that flying the gyroplane is, is wasted time. It's not, it's very, very valuable flight time. Another advantage of flying the gyroplane, of starting out the gyroplane and going to a helicopter, is that you actually obtain a absolute excellent understanding of auto rotations. Every landing in a gyroplane is an auto rotation, all right? And you learn the characteristics of an auto rotation to the nth degree. You learn how to vary your speed, what that does with rotor RPM. You learn a lot. And I've often said I learned way more about auto rotations from flying a gyroplane than I ever did flying a helicopter, all right? In fact, most of the students that are already gyroplane uh, pilots, when they transition to the helicopter and we start doing auto rotations, more than once they've commented that the auto rotations were the one part of their training that they were the most comfortable with. 
And that's exactly opposite of people that start with a helicopter, never having flown a gyroplane and go to a helicopter. When we start doing auto rotations, most of them are scared half to death for the first few auto rotations. I think it's mostly fear of the unknown. But uh, the guys and gals that have flown gyroplanes and add on a helicopter are very, very proficient with auto rotations. They understand how the process works. Uh, they understand how you know flaring and coming forward on the stick has uh, varies the rotor speed, and they become very proficient at performing auto rotations. So again, I can use myself as a, an example. This is how I obtained all of my ratings, and I started off flying in 1978, and we had uh, I started off actually with gyroplanes. And we had a gyroplane that you actually was a glider that you pulled behind a car. Back then, you didn't have to have a license to fly one. They were all ultralights. And uh, so we had a ton of fun learning how to fly a gyroplane that was being pulled by a car down the runway of, uh, at the local airport where I grew up. Uh, I branched on and picked up airplanes, went to more modern day gyroplanes, and um, ended up with hundreds of hours in, in the modern day gyro, gyroplanes, actually thousands of hours in modern day gyroplanes. And then, uh, I used to fly gyroplanes with Larry Barklidge, who was the head of the FISDO in St. Louis. And he's the one that suggested to me, he says, why don't you get your helicopter rating? If you want to fly helicopters, you've got the perfect way to do it. You can add on a uh, helicopter rating to an existing gyroplane rating and uh, save yourself a ton of money. So, <clears throat> interesting story. So I did just that. I went and did my helicopter training and I went to take my check ride and Clark Thomas was my uh, DPE for my check ride. And at that time I had 19 hours total time helicopter and was going for my commercial. Again, I didn't, I've never had a private uh, helicopter rating. I went straight to commercial helicopter rating. And at that time I had, to, I had uh, 19 hours total time helicopter. So I go to take my check ride, I sit down with Clark and you know, one of the things you have to do is prove that you uh, meet the requirements with the hours. So you have to bring your log books for your check ride. You show them the hours that you have. So Clark looks at my log book and he goes, where's the rest of your hours at? I'm like, that's all I got is 19. He goes, well, you can't take a check ride with 19 hours. I'm like, yeah, I can. No, you can't. I'm like, well, hold on. Let me call Larry Barclay. He's the one that recommended I go through this method. And so ended up calling Larry Barclay and he talked to Clark on the phone and and Clark got off the phone and goes, I've been flying helicopters since 1965 or whatever. He goes, I've never heard of this before. So, so his next statement was, well, you still have to pass your check ride. So at that point, we went ahead and uh, did the check ride, did the oral component, went out and did the um, flight portion and uh, Luck would have it, it was actually managed to pass my commercial uh, check ride and obtain my commercial helicopter uh, license with, uh, I guess by the time I was finished with the check ride, I had about 20 or 20 and a half hours. So, so I did additional training, got up to 29 hours, um, and then came back and did another check ride with uh, Clark for my CFI. And uh, I remember doing the, uh, the flight portion of the check ride. Back then you had to actually do full down auto rotations on your check ride. Now the process has changed a bit. You actually do full down auto rotations with me or your, whoever your instructor is. And you do them until you're proficient and then we sign you off as proficient doing full down auto rotations and you go take your check ride. Now your check ride for your CFI is very, very similar to just your commercial check ride except for the fact that you're doing it in the left seat. Now you're also playing the role as the instructor doing the check ride and teaching your DPE how to do um, certain flight maneuvers, confined areas, whatever they ask. But the process is uh, uh, somewhat changed now. But back then you had to do full down all the rotations doing the check ride. So we basically did the whole portion of the uh, flight portion of the check ride, got that done, and then as at the very end of the uh, ride, we ended up doing full down all the rotations. And so I ended up doing about four or five full down auto rotations in a swipe through all the way to the ground, on, in the grass, all the way to the ground. And I uh, finally asked Clark, I'm like, how many of these things do I have to do to, to pass my check ride? And he's like, man, you really only had to do one. I just wanted to see how long before you screwed one up. <laughs> so anyway, he said, yeah, okay, you can go, we're done now. You can go back to the hangar. So anyway, so I obtained my uh, uh, commercial at 19 hours, my CFI helicopter at 29 hours. And, uh, uh, 
was uh, again able to save literally tens of thousands of dollars off the price of my uh, rating. In part two here, we're going to get more specific on exactly how you do that now.